Free Golden Eagles for War Thunder. Download the app in the description below. Hey guys, welcome back to War Thunder, and welcome to what I would like to call the match where it starts like a seal club, it goes very, very bad in mid game, and then late game, you're going to be holding to the edge of your seat. Implying you are actually seating on a chair if you're seating on a. Ignore that. The Ferdinand. This is where I want to start the video off. Now, the Ferdinand is a tank I would like to make a review on. Unfortunately, I haven't got time right now as I'm legitimately recording this just before I start live streaming and I'll be uploading it after I've already live streamed because I don't have enough time to upload before I've live streamed. Yes, it's been a very, very busy day in the Orange Doom household. To start things off, if you would like to see a Ferdinand review, please spam a Elephant and Moat and Chat, because there's nothing else that I can think of right now. The Ferdinand is a tank I would love, love, love to review. To talk about it for a moment though, the Ferdinand is a tank that I've got experience with in patch one point something two years ago in Sim. This is legit the only tank I can comfortably say I remember playing this in Sim. I'm not a fan of Sim battles, I hate the idea of having half the players in a match and yet have twice the map size and therefore I don't play sim battles in tanks and I don't intend to any time in the near future. However, this memory brought back the memory of the Ferdinand and you know, when I thought about it, how am I going to play it? So why am I playing it? I'm playing the Ferdinand because I want to get the skins unlocked for it. My idea behind the Ferdinand though is it's a tank destroyer, it's an armoured tank destroyer, it's got a good gun. So I would think to myself, this sits in the back of the map and it snipes, right? That's probably what most of you think. Let's sit in the back of the map where nobody can pen us and we can just snipe. And this is how I played it in Sim, you know, back in probably 2014. And so having this, you know, kind of prejudice from, from the idea that, you know, I used to play this in Sim and I had a different play style, I approached the tank incorrectly when it comes to my mentality. I thought this is going to be an annoying vehicle to spade, uh, to, to go through the, the, the grind of the skins, because you have to get approximately 450 kills, which in realistic battles is about 275 if my math is correct, and it's not easy to get that amount of kills if you're going to be just using it as perhaps a, a reverse spawn camper. This is a, a very efficient thing for stuff like the Stuart email. It, it's not really a tank I would spawn first, it's a tank I would spawn when my team is lost and I've got tanks sitting in my own spawn and I'll just spawn it in because I can easily get a frag or two. With the Ferdinand, I thought the best way to try it out is to figure out just what it can do. And the way you figure out what tanks can or cannot do is by playing like a maniac. I've told this before, um, I even called it in the, I believe, P47N video a few months ago, I called it the naked flight. In, in the sense of, you, you, you take a vehicle you're not very familiar with and you play it in a very, very weird manner. You do what nobody would expect you to do in the vehicle and what you receive back from it is a confirmation or a denial. And so what I've decided to do is I'm going to play the Ferdinand in a way that no tank destroyer in the game is played, with the exception of maybe, you know, M18s, but M18s wouldn't really be tank destroyers. I still tend to count them under the light tank kind of department. So what I'm doing with the Ferdinand here is I'm just being about as aggressive as you can possibly be. I'm going to go straight for the caps. I'm going to stay in between the caps. I'm going to go for the flank. I'm going to do, you know, a, a game of positioning on Poland where I'm playing that the enemy cannot expect. Now, if this goes wrong, and it can go wrong, and eventually it will go wrong, and if I did the same tactic, you know, multiple times over and over, it eventually will go wrong. But after several matches played, I can tell you this tactic guaranteedly actually works. Well, it works with a spade at Ferdinand because the actual, you know, hull traverse and whatnot works. I mean, I've just managed to outflank a T-44 and a Carnarvon in a Ferdinand. Think about it. For a second, just think about it. A Ferdinand outflanking a Carnarvon and a T-44. That's what you can do in the game. This is why I love realistic battles. This is why I love being aggressive early game. Why I think if you have good map awareness, you can play any tank in any given way. 
And right there, I just spotted another target. This time it's a Type 62, a rare event vehicle from, I believe, January. It's a pretty dangerous vehicle because if he is spaded, and he likely is, he's gonna be using Heat FS. And Heat FS against my armor means that he's gonna go straight through. Now, most people would get afraid by that, but for me, I'm not scared of APDS. I'm more scared of large Russian 122 guns that are shooting in the side because those guns will actually do massive damage. Heat FS, whilst neglecting armor, doesn't have any post-penetration effect, meaning if the enemy doesn't know where the Amorak sits, he can't kill me in one shot. If you look at the way the Ferdinand looks, it has six crew members, three on each side. It is physically impossible for a single Heat FS shell to go through the tank in such a way to one-shoot it, unless it's been damaged before or he hits the Amorak. And now to engage the IS-2. An IS-2 is a pretty dangerous opponent if played correctly. Well, the problem with the IS-2 is the slow reload. The Ferdinand has a consistent reload of that long 88. Meanwhile, the IS-2 is just sitting there with 122. And here's the thing. He's going to reload in the time that I reach him. The question is, is he going to pen me? Because if he doesn't pen me, I will kill him. And so I just ruffle stomp in like a raging bull. He bounces his shot off the optics. I go straight for the middle of the... Uh, the mantle it really just goes straight through. It's very hard to not kill an IS-2 at this range, with this gun, with this tank. Now whilst we are working our way towards an ace match here, our team's not doing that well. We have nobody contending for capture points, and the enemy is just engaging a triple cap. To give you an idea, if right now I got taken out, I would have plenty of points to spawn any given vehicle. A backup, a tank destroyer, a heavy tank, a plane, a bomber, a fighter, whatever I've got. And yet, I would have decided not to. In a match like this, when you have no capture points, your biggest objective is to go and retain those capture points. As soon, of course, as you have pushed towards the enemy spawn. I mean, here's the thing. I'm sitting in an open road, and I'm looking over towards one of the enemy spawns, and they're just continuously throwing out vehicles. It would be a shame not to push towards it and get myself a bit of an open ground terrain where the Ferdinand can start and looking around for new targets. At this point, I've got enough kills to not really care about what happens in the game, but I do want to help my team out a bit. So I look at the map and we can see Charlie's being taken and most of my players are pushing towards there. Now, Bravo is something I can't really cap from here. The time that it would take for me to get around over there would be ludicrous. So instead, I'm gonna go back towards Alpha, where I've kind of become, uh, this was the beginning of my, you know, kind of flanking journey, and if I'm lucky, I'm gonna get towards Alpha in just about the same amount of time that my teammates will. Now, whilst I'm doing this, and if you do end up doing something similar yourself, or if you ever find yourself in a similar situation, so you're kind of sitting between the enemy spawn and a capture point, I mean, I've got my back turned towards any of their players who might spawn in, and I'm also very, very vulnerable for any planes that might be in the sky. So obviously, close air support will be a hazard. Now, we all got a position where once a match, we find ourselves in our tank destroyer or a heavy tank or a medium tank, we're still alive, we haven't died, but there's enemy close air support up. I have no machine gun, I have no smoke, I have no way to reliably protect myself from the enemy uh, close air support player. What I can do is I can stick close to my SBA, and one of my favorite things to do, keep close to buildings. If you keep close to a building, you're nullifying one of the approaches for the plane. Meaning, if the plane is approaching from east, and you put yourself onto the western side of the house, he's going to have a very, very, very hard time trying to drop bombs or even reliably deploy rockets. Now, this won't keep you alive for long, obviously, but even if you can delay the enemy plane by about one or two approaches, that could technically give you enough time to reposition, maybe tank some damage, or for your teammates to come in, either an SBA to support you, or uh, your friendly closer support to contend with them. Now, for me, this match was going very, very well. Now, at this point, I'm still very confident that I'm going to stay in the game. I've got eight kills, and I'm focusing on the last guy, who's an A13. I don't know who spawns an A13 in a 6.3 match, but I'm not going to complain. It's a free kill we're about to get, sniping across the map, and that will be our last kill in the Ferdinand. Nine kills is what I managed to pull out here in around about nine minutes of the video, so we'll call it a, a kill per minute, which is a very, very good trade-off in the end. I was trying to push for that double A's game, because I think it would make, uh, you know, for a fantastic video, but unfortunately, I do in fact get taken out by an enemy charity. And this is where the decisions start to happen. What are we going to do now? And the answer is obvious. Right now, I'm gonna spawn close air support, because we can use it. 
We have one and a half capture points. We're about to lose Charlie, I believe. And so spawning a plane right now is still a good option because I know enemy also has planes up. My choice for today is gonna to be the Focal 490 F8. We've got four 50 kilogram bombs and one 1,000 kilogram bomb. Every single time somebody says Focalwolves, that's what I think of. I see and visualize the F8 with that monstrous payload. And yet the monstrous payload is a curse in itself. The main problem is the small bombs drop first. And if you want to use the small bombs, you'd preferably want to use assault fuse. And assault fuse means that uh, the bombs will explode upon contacting with the enemy tank, the ground, uh, but no sooner than I believe one and a half seconds after deploying from the plane. Now, you can do assault fuse in the 50s, but if you use the assault fuse on the 1000 kilogram, you're gonna end up killing yourself. So what I decide to do here is just drop the 50s and I get a critical hit. What really happened is the bomb was too heavy, I compressed at high speeds, and I wasted a potential to get an actual kill. What I could have done there would have been a suicide bomb if, you know, my brain functioned, and I would have gotten that kill, would have prevented the enemy from capping A, and our team would have been pretty much plenty better off. So to redeem myself from that absolute disaster of a close air support, and by the way, this is where the problem is, close air support, what I just did, it costs a lot of spawn points. Essentially what I've done is I've spawned the plane in, a spawn that costs twice as much as a tank, and what I've managed to do is a whopping critical hit. Think about that for a moment. That's where the close air support can be used as a very, very good exploitable feature. If the enemy is in planes and you pretty much, you know, manage to deny them of any kills, you deny them of spawn points. And a person who has little spawn points spawns a plane and is then killed before doing any damage is likely going to be eliminated from the match or at least forced to play in an SBA. And when you're playing an SBA, you're still useful, but you can't really contend for capture points quite as much as you can in a tank. Now, luckily for me, the nine kills from the Ferdinand are transferring the spawn points over and over. And so I'm able to use the Yak Panther. Why the Yak Panther? I wanted the fast tank, Yak Panther is one of those, and I can get my way up towards Bravo. The trick was this, I want to go to Bravo, capture it, and then put the position, which is very good because it's on top of the hill, to snipe across the remainder of the map. And if you look at tickets, yeah, this is where the map is going from bad to worse. This is called the mid to late game, and things are looking horrible. And now they're looking even worse because my situation awareness has fallen, I got my driver and commander taken out, and then luckily the charioteer takes a second shot it doesn't do any damage, I'm able to reposition using the binoculars and eliminate them from the match. This opens up a bit of an opportunity here for me. However, if you look at my teammates, this is not looking good. I've got a verbal wind at behind the map, I believe. He's just sitting there doing nothing. We've got Spitfire seal clubbing our planes up in the sky because most of our teammates are using very weak lineups. Instead of using something like a, a K4, we're all stuck in 4.7 props. And the enemy team has every single capture point in the game. This is the definition of bad. And I don't know why here, this is another stupid move on my behalf, I'm trying to get the kill on the, uh, I believe the uh, Mark II Crusader. I mean, he's not an important target, I can completely ignore him, but I wanted that extra kill for some reason. Right now, my focus should be on the capture point. The sooner I get the cap, the better he's gonna be for my team. And you'd think that I'll finally hit him, but no, even after a second shot, I still can't get this gun to work. I don't know about you, but I don't like long range sniping anymore because I've gotten rusty at it. Long range sniping requires precision, it requires accuracy, it requires a little bit of patience. Those are three virtues that I don't have. So instead, reposition, go for the capture point, and then reassess, do a little bit more lead, and finally seclude. Well, not really a kill, but it will be close enough and good enough for me. And luckily enough, my team is also reacting. One by one, they're re-entering the capture point, they're redoing the objective, and they're making my job a little bit easier because at the moment, if there were no teammates on the map, I would be forced to likely either surrender or try to do, which is essentially impossible, several capture points with a single tank. Now the enemy is smart. They're very, very smart in the sense that they've got planes up and they have a few tanks that are still contending for my capture points. So I'm keeping an eye on them, checking them out what planes are flying around because if, if I spot any rockets, then I know that person is gonna try to come for someone. If the enemy doesn't have any armament, then I can completely ignore them. I'm an Yak Panther. Nothing can really penetrate me, especially not a Spitfire, so I should be safe from that danger. Now, the Charioteer that we killed before has now respawned using a backup, a very smart move, I have to say. Unfortunately, he butchers his first approach. Again, I'm using the binoculars to shoot through the thick grass. Whilst you can just turn the grass off, I, I don't think that's, you know, 
convenient on a um, computer running a GTX 1080 Ti. So I like to just use the binoculars as a bit of healthy practice. Anyways, I push into the charioteer through the smoke and get taken out by T3485 across the map. Salty, to say the least, but not impossible to make a comeback. So a decision has to be made now. Are we going to go for a plane? Are we going to go for a tank? And I think I'm going to try to redeem myself by respawning the backup of the F8. If the charioteer will use the backup, it's time for me to use it. 10 kills, 2 capture points, 3 deaths. That's our current standing on the scoreboard. And I've got a bit of a theory I want to share with you. I've been thinking about this and I've talked about it during the streams. What wins a match? I've, I've really thought about this sentence because um, I believe Mike said that close air support is the easiest way to win matches. Uh, for a long time, I thought to myself, well, matches are won by ticket bleed, so it would be tanks that carry matches. But I've come across a bit of a better explanation for it. I believe matches are carried by the top three best players of both teams. Meaning, if me, being on top of my team, I do not do enough damage, I will be responsible whether I like it or not for the outcome of the match. At least that's how I look at it. So, German closer support, let's go with prioritization. First of all, we're in a fighter, but we do have bombs on, so we're technically we're an attacker, we're a, a bomber, sluggish vehicle. There's a Spitfire up, and it's a Spitfire Mark 5C, which is a very nasty one, so I want to kill him before he kills me. I failed doing that, but I've damaged him enough to buy myself some time. I'm going to engage a Centurion Mark 1 now, because he just spawned in. Now, call this spawn camping, if you will. At this point in the match, he's a very dangerous opponent. He can snipe across the map. He is something I have to focus on. Second thing, capture points. Whenever somebody caps a point, they're putting out their location for you. That's when you got a strike. So I'm gonna make a quick turn around here. I'm still looking for that Spitfire because if the Spitfire comes back for me, especially in that slow of a turn, it's gonna be a liability. I don't spot whoever was in the cap, so I re-engage the Centurion Mark I. It's the only target I've got in sight, and I wanna get these bombs off as soon as possible. So I drop the 50 kilogram bombs again, and yes, I've butchered that another approach. This means we've just wasted approximately two approaches, which could have been two kills if I was precise with the bombs or had the assault fuse on, and we have to re-engage this target, which means we've spent a total of five bombs on one tank. The reason I'm pointing this out is because in patch 1.71, bombs are gonna be everything you're gonna be using. Now, luckily enough, the 1,000 kilogram bomb with a two second delay is still a 1,000 kilogram bomb, and its splash damage is big enough to kill anything in a relatively large radius, so you don't have to really worry about being extremely precise. But with these smaller bombs and with patch 1.71 nerfing rockets, I do want to make a bit of a PSA for you. Start practicing bombs, because they're going to become a very, very important part of the meta, at least for those of you who are fans of using aircraft in tank battles. If you don't have the bombs yet uh, kind of prepped out, if you don't know which assault fuses to use, you might struggle and also carry your team into defeat. So, teammates, this is what I want to shout out for. My teammates that were still standing in this match were phenomenal. Not just were they stuck in a very, very odd number scenario. Not just were they playing in extremely bad vehicles at this BR. They did an absolutely outstanding job. To every single person who at this point still stands in the match, whether it's the Medium, the Nashorn, or the SBA, massive shout out to you guys. You've done a fantastic job at helping and assisting the carry of the match. And at this point, the team has re-engaged the triple capture point. All I have to do in the fuck off at this point is find any potential target spawning in. If it's an SBA, we're going to kill it. If I find the Spitfire, I'm going to kill it. If it's a tank, I'm going to mark it. But essentially, when you look at the tickets, right now, the match has reached the point of no return. It doesn't matter how many tanks the enemy spawns. It doesn't matter how many kills they can get. The time is so slim with the ticket bleed to happen that we've simply won the match purely on the principle of outnumbering the enemy. And this is why respawning is important, why using SBAA even when you've been taken out first is important, and why maybe playing the Ferdinand in a very aggressive role can still yield a very, very nice reward. I sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. That's it from me for today. I will be back probably tomorrow and over the remainder of the week with a bunch of content because I've got a lot of footage to release. Patch 1.71 is literally just around the corner. Any day now, the patch is going to drop. And for those of you who've actually missed it, a bit of a spoiler, the LA-174, the uh, LA-15 slight variation, very rare plane, reasonably rare plane, is now available for research and purchase. It's a unique vehicle if you want to get your hands on, if you're a collector. I think all you have to do is just 
basically research it and unlock it, but after a few days, I believe, it will become unavailable. So if you do want to get your hands on one, you know, get it now. Is the plan anything special? That much I have to say, no. So if you're not somebody who's focusing on collecting all planes, I don't think the LA174 has anything new to offer. But if you do want to see a review on that as well, do let me know in the comment section down below. Cheers.